So the first one, first I'm gonna reset this. Um, there. Switch everything off and we'll take a look at the maximizer first because I want to set my maximizer or my my makeup volume before I do anything else. So this is this is like the heart of it. This is your loudness. Um, if I drag this threshold slider down, it's gonna limit more. And if it's gonna limit more, it's gonna make it louder because it's it's automatically compensating for uh, the limiting that it does. Then we have all these different modes here. So these are just different flavors. I happen to like this one, but you might like another one. Um, then we have intersample detection. And intersample, um, as with a lot of things in mastering, they're sort of these techy kind of concepts. Um, but what it has to do with is if you go from analog audio to digital, it will, it will, um, digital cannot take a continuous signal. It will only, it will, can only capture a signal at a specific time. And this is called the sample rate. And the sample rate, um, does the same thing as, uh, that 44 or 48 or 96 uh, kilohertz. That's the sample rate, and that is how many times it will capture a wave um, for each second. So the peaks that we are measuring, they, they, um, there can be peaks in between those times it's capturing the audio, and then we're talking about um, intersample peaks. We don't actually see those because digital doesn't see it. But if we go back to analog, we can get those peaks again. Um, these are also called ISP values, and it's a good thing to read up a little bit on them um, because it's sort of a special thing. We need to track those. In other words, in digital, sometimes we can be at um, minus 0 0.2, while if we go to analog, it can still distort at um, well as much as a dB uh, above 0. So that's why I have this intersample detection on, so that we can detect those peaks and values. Then we have the margin right here, which is the maximum output setting. So um, if I set this to uh, minus 0 0.3, we're taking care a little bit of those intersample detections. Then even if we go a little bit over, we're still probably good. So I normally like this as a safe setting. Um, that 0 0.1, uh, minus 0 0.3 dB, that's not gonna matter that much for the, for the eventual volume. Um, so next thing is I'll drag this slider down and I start seeing where it's uh, where it's going to distort or where it sounds good, sort of where I want to have it. This, uh, right now we're getting a very healthy signal where we see that the output is minus 0 0.4. If we go a little bit further, it starts to actually uh, limit and then we can see those reds. It's not, it's not a bad thing, but then it will start to, to change the signal. So far we were good. Um, we didn't have to limit to achieve extra loudness. Um, now we do. As soon as you start to limit, you're going to hear things that you might like or might not like. For me, I hear that the drums get gets a little bit too loud um, right now. It sounds like the snare especially is very loud. And the bass as well. But because I have stems, I can, I can compensate for that and I can take down the drums again. And I'll use that with the... I'll probably use that with an extra gain on the output so I don't affect the compressors. And I'll drop it a dB, for example. And one thing, because that snare is getting a little bit aggressive, I'm going to use an EQ there, and I'm going to try to find a little bit of those snare frequencies. And that's where it's a little bit too aggressive. So I'll take down a dB or so there, 
uh, with a fairly narrow band. So we've taken out a little bit of the harshness there and what I can do is take out um, just that brightness in the mid channel or take out more in the mid channel and then leave a little bit more of it in the side channel. Um, still take out a little bit but we can also leave a little bit. So maybe take down 0.4 dB. We're using very, very subtle subtle values with mastering and it's often enough. made it a little bit less aggressive all right let's go back to our um, to our limiting and I'll do the limiting first because I'll do most of this stuff later when I'm done with the other limiter settings so next to that we have a stereo link um, we can enable that and if we set that to uh, for example 80 percent it means that it's gonna it, it's gonna basically use two independent limiters for the for the left and the right channel so if we link it the limiting is going to be exactly the same on both channels um, but I normally like to set this a little bit lower so that um, it's gonna be mostly the same but we can have some bleed on the left and the right channels and then we have the dithering options and dithering is just there to uh, change small artifacts that can happen um, on playback. It's just something to enable. Don't a lot of people are worrying a lot about. It. I don't worry too much about it. I just choose my uh, dithering and I'm and I'm good to go. Um, the only thing to note there is that you should choose it only once. Um, you should only apply dithering once for your whole track. And some plugins have it auto enabled, like the um, Waves L2 limiter has it auto enabled. It's a bit annoying. We have to make sure that it's only here. Also, if we can, if we export in Logic, and we say project or section, we can um, choose some dither options there as well here. So make sure that one is off if you're using it inside inside Ozone. Um, then I have my character. Um, this is just the how fast the compressor is behaving. Um, and I normally, well, this is a more acoustic track, so I can set it a bit slower. Basically, fast down here is going to be more aggressive, it's going to be more noticeable, and slow is going to be more transparent. So with slow, you, you can get it less loud, um, but it does sound a little bit more natural. And with everything basically in mixing and mastering, it's sort of this trade-off between things. So that's the, that's the whole um, limiter module. Let's visit the equalizer. 